contextualize everything, and you're not nuancing your argument. Your argument is Palestinians are white and Israel are black. I'm not saying Israel that. Israel are not white. I didn't say that. I'm telling you the first. I, I didn't say that. I think, I think, you're strawmanning my that. argument. Are you, are you, are you I'm not, not saying that. No, no. But did I disagree that rockets are fired into Israel? But why did you? Did I did, did I disagree that? Did I disagree? No, no. Did I disagree? Well, well, well like that's not me. That's Israel doing it. Israel. The Israeli Defense Authority, the uh, defense, the Israeli defense themselves, they laugh at these rockets. These rockets have no guidance system. They have no warhead. They are glorified fireworks. This is what the Israelis say. They are nothing but glorified fireworks. You know it and I know it. So what's the argument here? They don't necessarily glorify fireworks. People died. They are... People died. You, last war, last war, Listen, last war, you say you, you, you're a Jew, right? I'm a Jewish Right, boy. okay. I'm, I'm Muslim, right? I'm not, okay. You know and I know that these are not sophisticated armaments of the modern battlefield. These are nothing but glorified fireworks. They're not, they're not sophisticated. It's not sophisticated. That's fair enough. There's no warhead. That doesn't mean you need to diminish, you need to diminish the impact that they have. No, 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 no. But there's an issue here. It's not about diminishing, but it's about at least recognizing what it is. They are, they're, listen, they are glorified fireworks that at best damage one or two homes, literally. And as a consequence, and I would hope as a Jew you would see this as, as an injustice, that the bulldozers are operating 24 hours a day in response, and they are flattening 18,000 homes of the Palestinian people. That's not right, brother. And even the patriots on the right. side are stopping 90% of their, their No, no, in fact, a lot, a lot of them make it into Israel because they're not, they, they can't even reach the cities. They can't reach any areas where you could even commit damage. So Israel, Israel basically ignores those. And the ones that it feels are going to come, because I think the Patriot missile costs $1 million per missile, Israel being careful and prudent, and it should be, it doesn't want to waste those missiles. So it only knocks out what it sees as a threat. But the reality here is that you have a knight in shining armor with a big shield with a massive sword and on the other side you have a man holding a stick and he wants me to say that this is a war that this is a battle no this is not a battle it's not a war and so where so where are you so where are you painting now right once again the idea if you're all you're just generalizing them as being those people who have the sole mindset and purpose in their life to basically what kick as many no there is a systematic and you can see this in reality. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. There is a systematic from day one intention to get rid of the Palestinian people and to replace it with a Jewish people, is a Jewish state. Is it institutional or does that come from the population? It comes from institution. Uh, it comes from institution and it is backed by many of the population because they vote in right-wing governments you know because they because they vote in right-wing uh, extremist parties Do you know what happened the last couple of i think sharon was an extremist and a murderer quite frankly you know and they voted the last, him in do you know the division that exists in the last election how many different yeah because it was somebody but that was because of netanyahu being so corrupt the people were dis, so dissatisfied corrupt. with the, the level of corruption Agreed. so what did they do they wanted to punish him and so as a consequence many jews decided that they weren't going to vote for uh, Netanyahu and they voted here there just to punish the government. They actually voted mostly for Netanyahu. He had the most seats at the Knesset, but it's because they did a coalition on the other side to get rid of Netanyahu, which is corrupt. I agree with you. Not, you see, he's I, corrupt, anyway, right? He was corrupt. I, I agree with you on many right. things. On many things, I think he's very, very corrupt. But what happened is that there was a coalition on the other side whose sole and only purpose was to get him off. My point, what, what I'm trying to say, and it's very simple, I'm not as educated as him, neither as you. You seem to be a very educated gentleman. But it's, it's the Israeli population, the Jewish population is a very segmented population with different mindset, different origin, different opinions. I don't deny so that. Wait, but you're unifying them under one sort of no. opinion. No. That's what, no. No. I said, is, I said when I say the word is, do, when me. I say the word Israel, I'm referring to the Israeli government and those that support that government. I'm not saying every Jew because did you know? I and I know that many of the peace advocates for the Palestinian people are Jews. Give me a name. Many, Bet Salem, well-known organization, 
It's a Jewish organization for the protection of the oppression of the Palestinian people. Even, even in England, there are many outspoken Jews, many, okay, who are not happy with what Israel is doing and they speak out openly about it. So there are very many, and that's why I don't want this to become, I don't want this discussion to become a Jewish Muslim discussion. I don't want it to be about Judaism and Islam. This discussion, there are many good Jews, many good Jews, many good Arabs who want peace. And there are people on both sides. And unfortunately on Israel, the last 70 or 80 years, virtually everyone, virtually everyone they voted in wants to simply increase the settlements, take away the Palestinian land, which are illegal under international law. And they just keep expanding and they keep going. And they don't care what the world says. The world says one thing and they say, well, whatever, we'll do what we want to do. So how do you make the things better? Tell me. How you make things better is the first thing you do. Just like an alcoholic, he has to first stand up and say, my name is John and I am an alcoholic. He has to accept, he has to accept that he has a problem. Until you accept you have a problem, you will never have a solution. Israel and the Jewish people who have supported Israel, they need to stand up and they say, look, what happened to the Palestinian people was a great injustice. We recognize it as an injustice. Now, you are our cousins. You Arabs are our cousins. Let us cousins sit down and let's come to some solution where you are compensated for the losses that you've had. Maybe we give you some of the land or much of the land or what we have. We try to live in harmony together. But if you don't even recognize there's a problem, how can you have a solution? You can't have a solution. And I'm sorry to say, and I would, I would hope, you know, watch this debate with Professor Norman Finkelstein and Alan Dershowitz. Alan Dershowitz is a Harvard Law professor. Uh, professor Norman Finkelstein is also from a uh, father and mother were both in concentration camps. He's an ethnic Jew. They have a debate. Why I keep bringing up this debate is because they covered many territories that we discussed with the, with the, with the brother, I forget his name now. Irian, yes, Irian. Many of these discussions were brought up by Alan Dershowitz and Professor Norman Finkelstein meticulously, with evidence, completely overturns those arguments. So when Israel claims we don't attack civilians, he brings out reports where people in wheelchairs with a white flag are being shot by the IDF. You know, you can't, we can't just ignore these things. I watch it. I never watch it. I, watch it. I would hope you watch it, honestly. Watch it. Watch and, it. And, and, you know, take my number and if we want to have a coffee together as a Jew, as a Muslim, I'll be happy to, uh, you know, uh, come meet you and have a coffee with you and discuss things further. Because I think this is what's positive. Why I'm so passionate about this subject? Not because I hate Jews. Because as a Muslim, we're not supposed to hate anybody. We hate the action, we hate what they do, maybe, yes. But we don't hate people. And we don't put people together in one group and say that we hate them. This is tribalism, this is racism, this is fascism. And the Prophet ﷺ came to destroy this. So we're not here to do hate. But why I'm so passionate is that those people don't have a voice. The Palestinian people don't have a voice. International media, international media and 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 the supp suppression just because something is reported a lot just see now look at joseph's argument what a childish argument some no 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 how can somebody have a voice logically just because of the consequence of it being reported a lot. Well, that's a voice. That's no, a, you see, you're very foolish, Joseph. I know, I'm very foolish. Because, right, you're because right. it depends on who controls the voice. So the who controls, majority. who controls, whose voice is heard? The overwhelming majority of the media who's, is who's negative voice? Israel. Well, Joseph, the point here is this. If you have something which is manifestly and evidentially true, 
no matter how much you try to suppress it, the evidence comes out. So we agree they so have when a voice. You, so, so, you know, no, when I say they have no voice, is because many times in, in, for Palestinian people, they don't have, uh, they, 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 don't have they don't have the level of sophistication of media, monetary backing and reach so, so that lobbyists have, me this that, lobbyist, that lobbyists have in Israel that extend that reach out into the international community you're well aware of this, so please don't play dumb on this. So, so, so let's just and that makes a difference. Now, when 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 Murdoch, Murdoch, who owns the Sun newspaper and used to own Sky, I think he owns less of it now. He owns a very right-wing media in America, like Fox News, and in Australia. Okay, when he says I'm a friend of Israel, what does that mean? What does that mean? You, what do you do for a friend? You look after your friend. You do what's right for your friend. You don't care so much about the other side. And when you have an editorial policy to only bring in people that will, that will agree or, 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 or go with the party line or the media line that you wish to portray, that's a very powerful thing. So no, they don't have the voice that, that the Jews have, the Israelis really? have. Okay, so let's it's just not equal. Let's, it's not equal. Let's just let me please respond. So if we look at every single mechanism, where every system for amplification of voices, whether it's the media, whether it's human rights organizations, whether it's the United Nations, all of them are amplifying the Palestinians' voice. So let's take the United Nations. There have been more critical resolutions of Israel than all of the rest of the countries what, why combined. Is that? Hear me out. No, no, me but don't I, make, didn't, I didn't interrupt. Don't you. make several points, though. Make one point. Let's deal with that one point. Okay. It makes okay. a more so meaningful let me, discussion. Let me, let me finish. We'll, we'll stay. Don't worry. We're yeah. staying on the point. There have been more critical resolutions of Israel than every other country in the world combined. I'll finish and then you can respond. When you compare that to what happened in Syria, half a million dead in a few years, Iraq a million dead, Rwandan genocide, what's happening with the Uyghurs, North Korea, you name the nation, you add those millions of people that have been slaughtered together and there have been more critical resolutions at the United Nations of one country. Sorry, one Let him finish, let him finish, let him finish. However you measure that, however you measure that crime, whether it's death tolls, whether it's oppression of people, whatever, there are nations which do almost exponentially, exponentially worse crimes than what you would accuse Israel of doing. So you want to count death tolls? He no, 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 don't, don't, don't switch the uh, argument. No, Let, no, let's no, stick to that so argument. Clear, so that is Let me deal with that. Voice. Let me deal that's with the that. United right. Nations. Let me deal with that. Okay. So now this is Joseph's, respectfully, I would say weakness in his argument okay okay so he is saying that there's been a lot more reporting about the palestinian conflict Critical and in particular he's saying there's far more united nations resolutions passed against israel first of all i would say okay well why is that and i would say that, because that's because israel's being a very naughty boy no i would say right? because nations vote yes. in accordance to their foreign policy okay. and so, so it's in uh, the nation's uh, uh, interest joseph i didn't interrupt you you asked the question i know i didn't interrupt oh, you. It, was a, it was a rhetorical yes, question yes sorry, yes sorry. yes yes it was a rhetorical question so that's the first thing the second thing is this conflict has been going on for over 70 years so accumulative accumulatively you would expect there to be a lot more reporting so it doesn't follow that just because there's less reporting in Rwanda, which lasted for what about eight months, Pakistan, nine Kashmir. months? It's gone long, no, let's a year not longer. list. Let's not list things as long as your arm. Well, that's let's, <laughs> let's deal, no, no. But let's deal with your. Don't hey, respond no, to no, my no, argument. No. Don't refuse. Now, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph's interrupting me. Sorry. Joseph's trying to do what Joseph always does, which is shotgunning. So what Joseph does is he Spongy tries to. to no, question. you throw in a whole. You, I only need to give you one example, and your argument is defeated. Because your, your argument is that they do have a voice. I'm telling you that when you have a military power that subjugates and oppresses a people, that controls the internet, that controls the media, that controls who can enter and who cannot exit, what uh, 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 you know, reporters are even allowed and not allowed, then you can't say that there is some you know, equality in terms of raising your awareness or raising your voice. 
it simply is not logical or rational for you to argue in that way. Now the point here is this, Joseph, and I ask you the question, because the other brother, Arian, Arian? Elihan. 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 He ran away. Elihan <laughs> could not answer. Is human rights, Amnesty International, the United Nations, and the global community all wrong when they say that Israel routinely commits war crimes on the Palestinian people? Yes. They're all wrong. Would you like me to explain why? Please, please do. So each of the institutions that you name go according, they all have interests. So if you're looking at human rights organizations, they are dependent on donations, yeah? So in the first year of the Syrian war, Human Rights Watch mentioned the conflict in Israel in their annual, sorry, the conflict in Syria in their annual report. I don't think they even mention it. They mentioned Israel, they dedicated pages upon pages upon pages to Israel. Despite tens of thousands of people being slaughtered in that year in Syria and virtually nobody being killed in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in that same year. So there's something going on. Why would a human rights organization ignore one of the gravest human rights abuses of all time? I have to go. You have to go. I can see what it's been fantastic. Thank you for helping us out for one week. Um, and so, so through my um, human rights watch, human rights watch, and so human rights watch goes where its donors um, want it to go. So for instance, human rights. No, sorry, Amnesty International was given a large donation from a Saudi donor on the condition that that money wasn't applied to LGBT causes. That's a bit of a problem. They took the money and then they were hugely condemned. These organizations are motivated by donations. What's going to pull in the most donations to sustain? The second thing, United Nations was the other one. Nations at the United Nations aren't voting in the, in, when they vote on resolutions in what is morally right or wrong. They are voting in accordance to their nation's foreign policy. And there are many more reasons for the nations of the United Nations to side with the Arab bloc oil being one of the biggest ones, than it is one small Jewish state. And that's why Israel is routinely condemned. And the nations that are supposed to be Israel's allies, like the United Kingdom, tend to abstain from the vote. So they don't vote in favor, they don't vote against. And so each of the institutions that you mentioned have agendas. And it's that simple. Okay, so uh, first argument is all of these uh, would you agree that Bet Salem is exactly the same then? Bet Salem is dependent on European funding. They get millions so, and millions. So it's a European. Jewish organisation. Uh, it's mixed. It's Israeli Arabs, okay, Israeli Jews. But, but, yeah. but it's known as no, a Jewish. It's an no, it's known as an Israeli okay, organisation. Israeli with uh, many Jews working there. Yeah. Yeah. So they are all corrupt and they're all lying about the fact that Israel commits war crimes. Literally five minutes. Are you going to join us? Or are you going to go? I'm going to go. I've got to go. Shall I? I'm going to go back to here. So, so the number one, according to Joseph now, all of these organizations are discredited. They should not be believed. They're all lying because they're, they're corrupt. So in essence, what you're saying, jo Joseph... So why didn't they mention well, no, no, Syria? Hold on a second, Joseph. Okay. Look, look, why they did not mention Syria equally or in that way or whatever, I can't comment on that. But what, I do, but what I don't assume automatically, Joseph, <coughs> excuse me, is as a, as, a, as a consequence of them not mentioning Syria in that way, if that's what you say is true, that somehow they're completely discredited and they shouldn't be listened to on anything. So, so let's look no, at no, the no, 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 you, you also mentioned the United Nations. Now, this is where Joseph, I think, has fallen apart. He's claiming that the United Nations, because they're taking all this oil money from the no, Middle I East, say that. or they have a lot of influence. I said nations vote <coughs> according to their foreign Whatever. policy. Whatever, okay, foreign policy, right? So it they're also true. they're also hungry for oil. No, I said that. Okay, look, are. look, the bottom line is go, you're, go. You're, the, 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 the inference that you're giving is that the United Nations are not balanced and honest because of the influence of the Middle Eastern countries. That's what you're claiming, right? No, 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 that's your claim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how many resolutions have been passed against Israel? Hundreds, hundreds. I have hundreds of them? Yeah. How many have been enforced? In what way? 
How would they enforce them? You tell me how they'd enforce no, you, them. You tell me. How well, do they? No, you ask the questions. How, how, how do they enforce what would that them? Enforcement look how like? do they enforce them? You ask the question. You don't know how, how? You don't know how a United Nations resolution is enforced? Yeah, tell me. You don't know? Yeah. Are, are you not aware? No, tell me. Okay, one way would be sanctions. From how, who? Sanctions against Israel. Okay. Yeah, that's one way. Yeah. Now ask you. I ask you the question. You said hundreds of resolutions. How many have been enforced? So, very few. How many? Very few. I don't know. I'd say probably none. Okay. None. You, you know what you don't know? None. none. You know what you don't know? Now, look at this. None. The Arabs are so influential, they're so, they've got the United Nations so in their, in their fist, in their hands, that they're the ones driving the, sanction, the, the, the resolutions, and yet they're incapable of even implementing or getting them to implement even one. So, so why would you yeah, say the Yeah, does nation? that make sense? So, so, or the boycott. Really? The boycott really? Well. Joseph, really? So, so what's your argument? So really? You're, you're saying that there aren't these resolutions really? or there are critical resolutions? I think I've made my point. No, no, no. Uh, Very well, I think. Are, are there critical yes? resolutions? I, I, should, there I shouldn't even have to explain it for no, you. No, no, I'm not, I'm not following. Are there or aren't there hundreds of critical you said resolutions? They, you said there were. I'm saying there Resol were. I asked you how. Look, resolution by itself is words. What makes a resolution what makes the resolution significant in any measure, in any way, is if the words are backed up with action. With action. Okay, you're kind of, you're, you're missing the point. You're, you're missing the point. No. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. You joined the conversation. What, what is the no, point? No, you joined the conversation don't, don't, don't deflect. Okay. So, don't deflect. So you're missing the point. The point was the Palestinians don't have a voice. Yes. No. no that, that, that's Deal not, with what I just okay. said to you. No, I am. I'm, don't Don't go to the Palestinian now. Answer the question. Okay. Why can the, the Arab nations? Let me speak. I'm not bullying you. Okay, so I asked you a specific an, question. Let me answer in my own words. We started the conversation with the Palestinians don't have a voice, was your claim. I said they have a very loud voice, and that's why there have been hundreds of critical resolutions against Israel at the United Nations. This is the point, yeah? You've then said, yes, there are all these critical resolutions, but they somehow don't have a voice because they have, there haven't been sanctions applied to we've Israel. We've dealt with the voice. Well, sorry, what's the verdict on we've, the voice We've then? dealt with the voice. Listen. We have not. That, it is, the whole point it is why, why okay. we mentioned Joseph, these institutions. Joseph, 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 please don't be naive with me. Don't be naive stop, with please me. Please stop condescending No, I'm not being condescending. You are being You're very being, no, condescending, no, no. sir. This is what you do always, Joseph. Really? You, 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 it's a tactic of Joseph. Be it's a effective. man, be a big man. Okay, I'm sorry. I, right? I, I, when I make a slight comment like this, it's not really an insult or a big derogatory comment, right? It's not like that. Don't just, suddenly, no, no, no. Do the Palestinians don't, have a voice? Please, yes, I know, that's don't, the debate. Don't wither in a corner, all feeling like you've been assaulted or, you know. No, it's not like that, Joseph. Okay, fine, fine. Be, you, you've made your we're point. Men, I, we're I, men, we're men. Be a man, be a man. Right, as manly as right. You. Now, one day, inshallah. Inshallah, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. possibly with all not. Boys, with all possibly, the possibly not, possibly yeah. not, right? Brave now, man, brave now, man. The thing is this. Big man. Did I say they have no voice? I didn't say they have no did, voice, zero matter. voice. You said the Palestinians don't have a okay. voice. When I said the Palestinians don't have a voice, does that mean zero voice? It means that the military occupation yeah. of Israel okay. ensures, Changing the ensures that that voice is limited dramatically. Now that would Just make sense. Why would that not make sense? But you know what you're doing, uh, uh, Joseph, do you know as usual. You're doing? No, no, you know what you're doing. Do you know what you're doing. Joseph, you're moving jo the goalposts. Joseph, Joseph, you started the Joseph, statement. It's on Joseph, one, two, three, four, Joseph, five cameras. It's an absurd. You said the Palestinians yes. had no voice. Yeah. I've just shown what, you what, how they have one mean? of the loudest voices what, what is in the that, world. What does that mean, Joseph? Accept that what you're that, wrong what instead does of changing the debate. What, what does that mean, Joseph? Joseph, he was saying to you. No, no. If I said, if I, if I said to, if I said to you the Uyghur Muslims don't have a voice, they have no voice. Yes, yes. So say that again. If I said to you, the Uyghur Muslims have no voice, or they have no voice, right? Are there? A lot of people would agree with that. I would say there would be a stronger case for that, given the ignoring right. of the international community yeah, yeah, yeah. and the lack of yeah, pressure yeah. and focus on China for yeah. the persecutor. I would say that would be a fairer right. statement. Are yes. there some Uyghurs that have come out and publicly said this is what's been happening no, to us? We're not talking about that. We're talking about the biggest conflict in terms Joseph, If you do a search on relax. the internet. Joseph, relax. If you do a I've search, asked you a very specific question. I'm answering a very... I'm giving no, you my answer. I asked you, have some Uyghur Muslims come out and well, said... Got nothing to no, do no, no, no. It talking. has everything to do with what we're saying. If you it has everything. If you can't differentiate have, between the United have some, Nations have and some, some Uyghur Muslims, have some, then God help us. It's a different argument, Joseph. It's not a different... Have <laughs> some Uyghurs come out, have some Uyghurs come out and, 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 and said publicly what Oy they're going vey. through. Yes, Oy they vey. have. So does that mean they don't have a voice? 
That means that nobody has spoken out, nobody can speak out, there's no evidence, no truth coming out from there at all. It doesn't mean that. So let's not let's not just get on one word and, and try to make it into an argument. The debate was whether the, the what Palestinians I, what I, now, have a voice. Now, You've given a, a, what you mean, haven't, I, I, I haven't finished. I haven't finished, Josie. Okay, continue. The second part that we moved on to, which you haven't answered, well, we're not moving and on tried on to, to deflect. Part. We're not moving on to the and second part to until deflect. we finish with the first. I asked you. I'm not having you run away and move the goalposts. We're going to deal with the first You made an argument. Do the Palestinians have a voice, yes or no? Your response, okay, so your, hold on a second, response hold on a second. your response was, yes. when I gave you the United Nations, yes. the most reported conflict in the world in the media, yes. I gave you, if you look in terms of just go on Google Ngram yes. and look at how many times Palestine has been mentioned in books over yes. the last 70 years, yes. you will see it's one of the most reported conflicts in all of right. human history. Okay. And you're saying yes. that they don't have a voice. Oh, hold, then, hold on, 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 hold on a second. And your argument against right. it was if two Uyghur Muslims come out and say okay. that we're being oppressed. Straw man, straw man. Well, that's what you literally no. just straw said. Man. Straw man, straw man. No, no, finish your point. Oh, I, no, no, finish your point. Because then, okay. I'm, then I'm going to, no, no, hold on a second, Joseph. One second, one second. If fin hold on, Joseph, one second. Finish your point. I am going to give my answer. It's up to the people to decide. Then we're going to move on to the more pertinent question that I asked you at the end, which you could not answer, that sort of got you, you know, on a sticky wicket. So we're going to deal with that. So please finish your point first. Go on. So my point is very simple. If you agree that the Palestinians have a very loud voice and the Muslim community, the Ummah, are amplifying the Palestinian cause and the media is amplifying the Palestinian narrative and the United Nations have shone a huge spotlight on Israel and many human rights organizations are also amplifying the voice of the Palestinians. If you're saying that, then we're in a complete agreement and we've just wasted 30 minutes. No, okay, so you made your comment. Hold on, you made, um, I didn't interrupt Joseph, okay? Whenever a person says, and you know, in the normative sense, when we use the words that they don't have a voice, it is never understood in the normative sense that nobody or no voice comes out from a particular event. It's never understood like that. It's always understood that their voices are suppressed, that their voices are limited, that there, there is oppression and as a consequence, yeah. they can't get their voices out. Is that is what it means. Conflict. Now, Joseph wants to, you know, uh, get this term, no voice or they don't have a voice, okay? To mean, the voices to the mean that this is some, you know, entirety to every single Palestinian that's ever it's nonsense. So I've made my comment. Joseph is Joseph 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 hold on. Joseph is Joseph Joseph has made his comment. Now the thing is this the thing is this I haven't finished Joseph. I thought you finished. Now the the point here is what how now listen to this right listen to this brothers yes how can one elevate one's voice more than somebody else. Think about that. You need money. Israel has a lot more money. You need good political connections. More politicians in England, about five years ago, this report came out. They flew to Israel, then they even flew to the United States of America, which is their number one ally. Which report? Yes, it was about six years ago, I remember. No. Priti no Patel, Priti Patel who was the foreign secretary at the time. Yeah, that's right. Yes? The snake, I call her the snake. She is yes? Right. What does she do, the snake? She goes and meets senior Israeli officials in Israel. Whilst being the foreign secretary of this country, yes? And she gets sacked. In fact, she resigned because she was gonna get sacked by Theresa May who said, how dare you, as foreign secretary, go and talk to a foreign power, okay, without even your own government knowing. That's what you call political clout. That's what you call connections. That's what you call pulling the strings and playing the puppets, okay? So please, Let's not get bogged down in no voice. Israel has a voice. The same thing. But the problem Israel has is that when you do what you're doing to a people like the Palestinian people, it doesn't matter how loud you scream and you shout. 
the people are seeing what you're doing and that's why many good people in Europe and in America many Jews many Jews on the, if you go to the Palestinian charities that defend the Palestinian rights many of them are good good decent Jews who are standing up against this so please you can make your point but let's not get bogged down in this nonsense okay. so i would just first i would first of all like to thank you i would first of all like to thank you for basically making my point again and so i will just read it and i'll give you further examples you mentioned there are many jewish voices that are coming out in support of the palestinians and you're right in america there are many jews that support the palestinians and here and here um less so here but certainly in america there are many many progressive because there's far more jews Proge in america progressive yeah, progressive is in progressive so not, politics, so, oh, not religion. Okay, not religion. Okay. Um, no, also, we religion. Be, we have to be careful because the overwhelming progressive majority, Jews often nullifies the, 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 the Jewishness. The overwhelming majority of American Jews are progressive Jews as well. Yeah. Orthodox, you're a minority in America, but that's a massive tangent we don't need to go into. But effectively, if you go to any city in the UK, you're not, or any university, you're unlikely to find a Uyghur society. You're unlikely to find a Kashmir in terms of the conflict, the Kashmir, a free Kashmir society, or a free. Um, any of the many, many, many conflicts around the world with far greater death tolls and far greater oppression. You won't find societies for those conflicts in British universities. You won't find a Uyghur solidarity campaign in every single city in the UK. You won't find yet for the Palestinians, you have the Palestine, Palestine Solidarity Campaign in every single city in, in the UK. You have the Scottish Palestine, Solid, Palestine Palestinian Solidarity Campaign and you have in every university a Palestine society. The overwhelming, the overwhelming majority of the members of the Palestine society, our Palestinian society, the Pulse Ox, in every university are not Palestinians. The overwhelming, let him finish, the overwhelming, let him finish. Let him finish. Don't interrupt, please. The overwhelming majority of their members are non-Palestinian. If you look at the actual reporting of the conflict, it's out this conflict in terms of a and you positive. Try to shut them up. Please, please, in brother, terms please. Of a positive. I'll give you an example, a real example. Please, please, let Everybody finish, talks about the Jewish lobby or the Israeli lobby. At the last, not the, the latest one, but the one before that, when Corbyn was in, the last Labour conference that Corbyn, that Corbyn, Corbyn ran was a sea of Palestinian flags. Could you imagine if the Conservative Party had a, their conference and it was a sea of Israeli flags? The out there would say, look at the Zionist puppet masters, the Zionists control the Tories. Yet nobody talks about the Palestinian lobby when the entire conference was a sea of flags. There's a reason anyone for that. Can, anyone can Google same. this. It's not the same. Exactly, can exactly, Google that. exactly. The Palestinian. It's, it's not the same. Please, let, 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 he's making all, all sorts of arguments. Let him finish. I'm giving examples of They're the very weak, very weak. But let, but I'll let you finish. No, but we'll let him finish. We'll let him finish. I'm giving examples of the amplification of the Palestinian voice. If you're going to say, does Israel have a voice? Yes, of course Israel has a voice. I'm stood here as a British Jew, I'm not Israeli, and I'm advocating for Israel. There are many Christians that what, advocate for Israel. Prime, prime. There are many people that advocate for Israel, like there are many people that advocate for the Palestinians. In terms of conflicts, it is the most amplified conflict in the world. So all we're addressing is your initial statement. Do the Palestinians have a voice? Now, if you just said, who has the louder voice, the Palestinians or the Israelis? That's a different argument. What you actually said was the Palestinians don't have a voice. And I'm simply showing that that is objectively false, incorrect. They have a louder voice than the Uyghur. They have a louder voice than Rwandans. They have a louder voice than the Yemenis. They have a louder voice than any other conflict. They have the in... right to be... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I uh, agree they have uh, a right so, to a voice. Okay, okay hold on. How, how, how long has the conflict of Israel and Palestine been going on now? 73 years. Seven. Did the Rwanda conflict last that long? No, but there have been other conflicts uh, that have lasted longer. Hold on a second. Did the, the has has the Uyghur, Uyghur conflict lasted that long? No, but we can talk Pakistan and Kashmir. We can no. talk any of the conflicts I'll, on India's jo northern jo border. Jo jo Joseph, answer I, my question. I'm no, answering your question. I, I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm not going to be. No, jo 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 Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. I'm asking you specifically on the points you raised. So I'm giving you an answer. It's no, 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 no. So now conflict, you're talking about. You didn't mention Kashmir, did you? Conflict is not the same. I mentioned it earlier. I did. You didn't mention now. I just did. You just mentioned. You mentioned Rwanda, you mentioned uh, China, oh, you know, the Uyghur, that's, right. Yeah, fine, so, fine. So, so when you mentioned those, some of those lasted for eight months, a, a year, right? All I saw in the news when the Rwanda conflict was going on was people having their arms and their bodies hacked. 
it was on all the time. Yeah, I agree. But it lasted a very, the conflict itself lasted a very short period of time. So again, your point on that is mute, mute. What I would say here is this, when I say the Palestinians don't have a voice, you know, we can be pedantic, which is what Joseph is being. Sorry, yes, really he's, he's, literally... talking, he's talking about the adv advocacy groups that have been set up. They've been set up over the last 70 years as a consequence of the deliberate and continuous humiliation and oppression of the Palestinian people. And that has magnified over the years as technology has changed. And now Israel can't keep a lid on it anymore because every Palestinian now has a, has a TV camera. Every Palestinian now has a microphone. So they film and they get the, the information out. So yes, they have a voice. They have. You. Okay, we just wasted but, an hour. No, 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 <laughs> Joseph. Again, this is a, this is a silly argument. But anyway, I think we've worked this argument to death. I agree. We let we let I agree. we let the people we, 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 we let the people the decide. The we let the people voice. decide. Now, the, the the issue that you said that the United Nations, as a consequence of pressure or influence from the rich or Arab nations or whatever, are basically doing these uh, uh, That's sanctions. That's what I said. You're putting words that, in my mouth. What did you say? I said nations vote in accordance with their foreign policy, policy. interests. Fine. And their foreign policy interests Did, would be to... Uh, uh, hold on a second. Just, before we waste another 30 minutes. No. Do you agree with that statement? Do nations at the United Nations vote in accordance to their interests in terms of foreign Absolutely. policy? Absolutely. Okay, then we agree. Fine. We agree on that point. But you want to agree on the inference of that point, which I disagree with. But there what, what's the what, is the in, what is the inference? The inference is that you're saying that the United Nations are not credible. No, I didn't say when that. It, ah, hold on a second, you did. Because when I said to you that they said... I said, Hold on a second, hold on a second. Because I said, apart from Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, Bet Salem, right? An Israeli organization for the protection of the Jews and the Jewish... Uh, sorry, the Israeli the Palestinians, right? And I said the United Nations, you wanted to tarnish the reputation of the United Nations because you said it's not... Effect in effect, the inference is their view is invalid because people, the nations, are simply doing things in their own interest for their own interest. Now, the issue is if the nations, why don't you are, ask if, me what the I'm nation, saying, if the nations, if the nations, if the nations are doing it out of their own interest to condemn Israel for the persecution of the Palestinian people and, and passing the all these resolutions which you said were hundreds I said from that it would be logical and reasonable to assume that those interests that they have would also ensure that they enforce those resolutions otherwise they're just words yeah, by, by, by they're by meaningless by, by, by. so I asked you the question Joseph how many resolutions have these interests of these nations and the external interests and pressures that they have as a consequence of doing what's best for themselves, have they implemented do you, do you against Israel? Been implemented? How many? No, do you know why they haven't? So they haven't been, you agree? No, do, do, do you know why though? Do you know what the mechanism is? Well, why? well before we get to why, I want to ask it's, you, it's because have America, they? America, America vetoes. Have they? Have they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. America vetoes. Oh, so America, so, 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 yes, so, he's so, right. So, just I agree on something now, Josie. So very, very America quickly, vetoes. Very, very quickly, just so it doesn't look like I'm running away. I have to leave at 6.30, so we've got nine minutes. Just as a, Fine. So just to get on to the America thing, Israel has basically one friend in the world, more or less, and that is America, the United Nations. Well, and Australia, United, and United, Mi Micronesia. Uh, Micronesia. Oh, yeah, that, that Micro house, Micronesia. Well, well, you said only one friend. Okay. You said right. only you said only one okay, friend. Okay, let, let me rephrase. Yeah. That. They have one friend. It has, has about it has about four or four or five that veto. Sometimes four, sometimes five. Australia, America. Well, well, no, I didn't say they. Okay, sorry, sorry, but I said when they vote, when they vote. Okay. Anyway, anyway yeah. let's not get lost in the weeds, as you were saying before. Since, uh, so, since Netanyahu came to power, India as well uh, has a... I would say India and, Israel, uh, is, India and Israel are actually close Putin now, I'd agree yeah. with that. With that's, and, that's surprising, and, isn't it? Inshallah, inshallah yeah. Israel and all the Gulf states <laughs> soon, inshallah. And you know, you know what's surprising about that, Joseph? Thank you, the Muslims Joseph. are saying inshallah. So you have a, you, so you have a fascist <laughs> government in India, and by the way, before you make any assertions my family is from India my both of my parents are from India I've got Muslim I'm, Indian family I'm ethnically Indian I've got Muslim okay? Indian family born in this country I've got Muslim Indian family fine so I'm not good for you good that. for you but he but Modi 
the president of India was banned to travel to America when he was the, when he was the uh, head of Gujarat, yeah, it's true. okay, the governor, because he was directly implemented in the genocide that took place in my parents' hometown, Gujarat were over 1800 Muslims and I have Hindu workers that used to work for me years ago who confirmed it with their own eyewitness that the women were being raped on the streets and burnt and the people were being killed and this, this, and this person Modi that your president shook hands with has got blood on his hands. He's a fascist, racist ideology, the Hinduva. He's also shook okay. hands with most of the Western well, world. Fair leaders. enough, fair yeah. enough. But to, so please don't look at it as something positive. I see it as something negative. So I didn't say whether it was positive or negative. I agree that Israel is, got a, is beginning to get closer relations. Beginning to get India. close to fascist and racist, yes. Well, that's what he uh, is. If you want to talk fascist and racist, that, we know is. literally almost every but Muslim let's, regime let's, that's let's, around oh, Israel. Oh, really? Okay. Let's get, no, no, let's, no, let's get to... Assad. Let's fascist. Get to, oh, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. he's not. Okay. No, Assad's not a fascist. I, 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 listen, I have, listen, I, listen, I don't make two wrongs a right. He's your friend. That's okay? Why, there, are many tyrant, there are many tyrants oh, in the world. There are many tyrants in the world. Right? I don't say Assad is a good person. No. But it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. So I want to ask you, how many, how many... How many sanctions have been implemented by the United Nations against I'm Israel not, to I'm make it comply? Of, I'm not aware of any sanctions. No, any, Israel, right? None, veto. because American no, veto, yeah. American veto. All right. So there you go. So the Palestinian people can have as loud a voice as they want to. So we agree. It's irrelevant. So we agree. It's irrelevant. Okay. The people can. The people this can feels come. This like the most and unproductive conversation I've ever had at Speakers Corner because we've debated for an hour or however long it's been. We've made an awful lot of points. And to both the things you've argued with me, you've basically agreed. Joseph, if you're going to try to hoodwink the crowd, I'm not hoodwinking in, the crowd. In, 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 in sort of thinking that somehow you've made some profound no, no, point. You started the conversation. It's, it's quite frankly I laughable. I demonstrated how the Palestinians have a loud voice. You're embarrassing yourself, I really. I demonstrated how the you Palestinians really are. have a loud voice. You're embarrassing yourself. Okay, fine. Because I'll tell you why, Joseph. I, I am not. I at least I'm not strawmanning your uh, your argument. I, I ex listen, I the debate was the jo Joseph, Palestinians have a voice. Joseph, relax. I agree that you said that they do have a voice and that voice is huge. Did I straw man your argument? No. But you just constantly want to straw man my argument. I did not say I did not mean and I did not say, and in the normative sense as I explained, it does not mean that they have no voice at all. They have one of the loudest right. voices in the world, and we've just demonstrated how they have what, one now of the Now, why could that be, Joseph? World. Why could that be, Joseph? Because what could be the logical reasons of, of that mass for the, voice that you say that exists? For the purpose of this debate, it's almost inconsequential. If we both agree why, why that could they have that one of the loudest voices in the world, why did we just spend... I didn't say that. Well, I just... I'm so, saying from your paradigm. Okay. From do, your paradigm, you they have one of the, no. From your paradigm, you're saying they have one of the loudest yes. voices in the world. Yes. Why is that, Joseph? Why is that? Because they're um, principally the biggest reason for that is for most Muslims in the world, Palestine is a more important conflict than what's going on in the Central African Republic. I didn't Republic. ask you that question. I'm, I'm answering your question no. in my words, not your words. No. What's going on in the Central African Republic, no. what's going on in Yemen, and because it's at the forefront of most forefront of most You're Muslims, contradicting yourself now. Because it's at the forefront of most Muslim causes, no. it's one of the most impassioned. It, they, they raise more donations from the Muslim community than any other conflict in the world. Okay. You know, it, okay. Joseph, you've contradicted reason, yourself. The reason, that's fine. You can tell me how I, I've I'll tell you how you've contradicted yourself. Once I finish my point. Please, yeah? go ahead. And so because it is at the forefront of so many Muslims' um, thoughts, that when it comes to any of these institutions, whether it's the United Nations, whatever it may be, it's something which is of importance to Muslims, and that's why the voice is amplified. If this was a conflict taking place in Al-Andalus, or in North Africa, it would not have the same level of attention because it wouldn't have religious significance to billions of people. Okay, what, you, this is where Joseph has contradicted himself without even realizing. Right. Sure. Earlier, Joseph said that a lot of these advocacy groups that are in the universities are non-Muslims. No, I said non-Palestinian. Okay, listen. It's on camera. Okay, okay, Joseph, and a, when you go to a march here, Joseph, against Israel, it's not just Palestinian people. 
it's not just diversity. Arab. It's not just Arab people. But there's an awful it's lot of It's not just Muslims. Asian. There, it's not just Muslims, right? It's no, actually. It's, not just it's actually. If you look, it's at times I see predominantly white middle class English people. So it depends. So some of the Palestine solidarity campaigns. When are I was. Old, I agree. When I when I was on the the anti-war march here, against uh, the first the second Gulf uh, f second Gulf War. 90%, 95%, I would say, to me, outwardly, they looked non-Muslim, white, middle class. But we're not talking about... So, the you're, uh, you're, talking so, about you're, so when you bring Islam and you bring Muslim into it, this is not just Islam and Muslims. The entire world... You don't understand how... The entire works. world is crying out. You don't understand And they are saying that this is an injustice. Now, so you're, you're Joseph, you, you, Joseph, world, you, Joseph, you're agreeing Joseph, again. I was talking about I'm the Palestinian yes. okay, people okay. themselves have an embargo. Oh, they have yeah, restrictions yeah, yeah. on internet. They have restrictions on who can go in. And you're telling me that they can have as loud a voice as the Israelis who don't have those restrictions? Come on, for God's sake. I never Joseph, once said, and it's please. on camera, I never once said who had the loudest please. voice. I never once said that, that's so, something you just introduced. So, I said categorically the Palestinians have one of the loudest voices okay, in the Joseph, world. Joseph, so you've admitted, we've moved on from that, let the people judge. I, I you've do admi to, I do, that's I fine, you've admitted that the United minutes. Nations sanctions are not implemented because final, America vetoes them. Final thoughts. I agree, America vetoes them. The question that people need to ask themselves, why does one nation have the power to veto something that the entire globe may disagree with. Any, any you have nation, to ask the question. Any nation now, what you now what you would have to argue, this would be absurd, of course, is that America is right, and Israel is right, and sometimes Australia, I think Micronesia, these three or four nations are right, and the entire world, when it condemns what Israel does and passes these resolutions, are all collectively wrong. So, and that's what you would have to argue, Joseph. So I'll give you the closing thoughts because I do have to go. So if that were the debate, I would have presented many different arguments. The debate wasn't that. The debate was, do the Palestinians have a loud voice or not? That wasn't and a debate. Okay, fine. Okay, in that case, there was no was, debate. Was, Everybody, was, you've just wasted that's, that's ridiculous. 50 minutes. Okay. That's ridiculous. And I have to go, so you, okay. can, you can have the closing that's thoughts. That's fine. Thank you for the, the The debate was not purely based on one thing. That's why Joseph brought up many things as well, right? Now, when you build your case in relation to uh, an injustice, the, the sensible thing to do is to bring as many credible witnesses as you possibly can. And so the, it's a multifaceted reason as to why the Palestinian cause is being ignored. Because you see, when you just have words, which is what the United Nations basically are doing, they are worthless if they are not implemented and followed with action. It's just hot air. You see, if I see a woman being uh, uh, murdered, killed, a child being killed and murdered, and I have the power, I have the capacity, I have the influence, I have the arms, I have the economy to be able to stop that and I don't stop it, I am complicit in that crime. And if I just said, oh, but I said it's a bad thing, I said to the person, you're doing a bad thing and I leave it at that, this is not sufficient. No sensible person would say that was a sufficient reaction to a brutal attack like this. So when they give their speeches at the United Nations, when they pass their resolutions against Israel, and when they are not implemented, when Israel is not pressured and forced to rectify its brutal occupation of the Palestinian people, that is, a pro that's, that is tantamount, like me just telling the rapist, the murderer, the killer, who I have the opportunity to stop easily, it's tantamount of me just saying, oh, that's a bad thing you're doing there. That's what it's tantamount to. And this is what these people are doing. So just because they pass a resolution doesn't mean anything. Actions speak louder than words. And there is no action. And there needs to be action. Because what's happening there is atrocious. What's happening there, and when I say they don't have a voice, 
They don't control media. They don't have influence on media. They don't have their own. Uh, they don't have their own airport, for God's sake. They don't have their their, their own access, uh, control of their internet or their telecommunication. They can be shut down in a second. If they're suffering, they don't. The witnesses can be removed. They can be threatened. They can be jailed. So we we know this goes on. It's happening. If a country truly has nothing to hide, why doesn't it allow the, the media to enter? Why does it not allow them to witness what's happening? Why only snippets that they release? Clearly, this is an agenda. This is a propaganda that they wish to do. And most of the world, quite frankly, are not buying it anymore. We don't accept it anymore. Because now, as I said, every Palestinian now, he has a, the camera, he has the microphone, he records what's happening and he shows the world. And these are children being brutalized. These are women being brutalized. This is wrong and this is an injustice. And I don't care if this injustice was being done by a Muslim against a Jew, I would be standing here and I would be talking against the Muslim because our religion does not allow us to be unjust and unfair to people, regardless of your color, your creed, your religion. And when there is a Muslim, he does something, I stand up, I say, you're wrong. When somebody was trying to go approach uh, the, the black brother Christian here who was shouting and screaming, I walked over to stop him. Don't throw water on him. Even though he was abusing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he was abusing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and in reality, he was abusing himself because you can't abuse the Prophet of Allah. You can't abuse Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't abuse Allah. You are just abusing yourself. But we live in this country, we abide by the laws and the law of the land is you can't touch him. So we abide by those laws, those principles that Islam puts in us. So an injustice is an injustice. And we have a beautiful example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And we have a beautiful example in the Quran where Allah says your dislike or your distrust or your, or your hating a people should not make you unjust towards them. So we, we stand up against injustice. At the moment, the problem that we have is that you have people like Joseph and the other Jewish uh, person I was talking to, they're justifying what Israel is doing. They're constantly trying to give reasons. Abuse is abuse. There are no excuses. And I'm not saying that all of the fault is on one side. Yes, there are some Palestinian people who do things that are wrong. I wouldn't agree with those things. But you have to see it in the light of the entirety of what's happened. These are a people who've been systematically uh, abused and humiliated. Their homes have been taken. Millions are in refugee camps, living in squalor. They still have, they hold on to the keys from 70 years ago that one day I will return to my land. You know, torturing them like this. And, 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 and these people are still standing up against the Palestinians and they're supporting the Israelis. Wallahi, they've suffered so much in the Second World War. And what surprises me is that a people that have suffered so much at the hands of a tyrant of Hitler, that they now become the tyrants themselves. They become the oppressors themselves. And not only that, but they justify the tyranny. They justify the oppression. They justify the theft of land, of property of these people. How is this acceptable? So yes, it's a passionate subject, but my brothers and my sisters, let it be a war with the pen, because today the war is with the pen. The war is with the speech. And that's how we, that's the capacity that we are in. That's the ability that we have. So we do it to that extent, inshallah. Our religion expects us to do justice and be just and be fair. We don't target innocent people. We do not, uh, we do not say this is a Jewish issue, that all Jews are like this. We should not do that. We should refrain from such language. Because if, and I've heard some of my Muslim brothers and sisters, if we start hating all Jews, then what difference is there between us and the Jew who hates all Muslims? We need to be reflecting on the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu abide by the Sunnah, and inshallah that is our solution. Asalaamu Alaikum.